Welcome to Nintendo Engineers. I'm your host, Chris Tysis, and we are here to help celebrate 10 years of Skyrim, which is a game I never thought that I would have played so much of um, over the past decade in terms of, of multiple consoles and stuff like that. You know, we've got um, one of the big guidebooks here to show you how big it is. Le Legendary Edition is one of the editions um, that we did review here a while ago, a few years back. You can see the breadth of the game. And what's the other book that they've got? The um, Library, which is quite nice, is another book of Skyrim that I have in my collection to, I guess, show you how much I have enjoyed playing these games um, over the past decade. And this time last decade, 2011, was when I got um, Skyrim, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, and Super Mario Land 3D, 3D Land it was, for the Nintendo 3DS that came out earlier that year, and we got Mario Kart 7, I think, that year too. So, but I think the surprising thing was that I didn't think that I would be um, as interested in Skyrim as the other two titles, but with Mario, you know, I played it and completed it, and it was a nice, fun game. Skyward Sword, I didn't like. I got to the first dungeon, I think I passed it, and I actually stopped playing it, despite getting um, the one with the gold uh, re remote and all that sort of um, glitzy stuff. And I got Skyrim for uh, PlayStation 3. And I think it was really my first experience of an open world game. Um, I guess in terms of my very first open world game I played was probably San Andreas and um, Vice City with um, the GTA series uh, back 16 years ago. That was really eye-opening going from N64 games and, you know, uh, previous ones, Super Nintendo back to Master System, etc. and Atari. And... So this was sort of my experience of an open world game. It was everything that I really enjoyed, you know, dragons and, you know, sword fighting and magic and this whole sort of open world of different secrets and dungeons and stuff like that that I really enjoyed playing um, this game out. And I think the interesting thing about the game is um, all the different versions that I did end up getting um, with the PS3 and then I did PC for the mods and then I got the PS4 for, uh, it, you know, it was really in HD. Um, uh, the special edition had all these uh, bonus things too. And then obviously it came out on the Nintendo Switch a few years ago with the special Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild gear. You know, the Master Sword and, and uh, the Hyrule Shield and his um, suit link. And, you know, I thought, well, I have to buy it again. You know, play it portable out and about on the, on the train and bus. Thought that was a, a really cool thing. And, of course, I got four different versions of the game. Um, no, I didn't get the PS5. Um, or the new one, the 10th anniversary one. Um, I think I probably didn't want to go back into it a fifth time, maybe one day uh, when I get a PS5 or something like that down the road. So while I'm still sitting here and dealing with hay fever and issues like that, um, I wanted to share some of my thoughts about the game, you know, I guess why I played it for so much and for so long. Um. I think for me it was about playing the Dragonborn and the storyline was something that sort of got me into it and the lore, the the weapons, you know, going off and being a powerful mage and going up the ranks and going through that um, that quest line, which was a lot of fun. But I think it was just exploring the dungeons and for me um, being in that environment and world, it's quite calming and soothing. And, you know, you would pick up books like this um, in the real game and you could um, open them up and, and literally read these books while you play in the game, which I th thought was really interesting. And so there was a lot of lore and, and smaller stories that were still interesting and compelling and, and fun to read over the years. 
There was also the um, all the many side quests that um, that I played over the years too. Um, you know, you always have the main story, but I think a good story or a good open world game is where you get sort of easily distracted by all the different things that happen in your world environment. And I think Skyrim is, is a great example of that. And I didn't really get into another open world um, game until Xenoblade Chronicles 2 in 2015 and again in 2017 with Breath of the Wild. And that was, um, you know, all three different experience games, I guess. And, and they all sort of play things differently. But I think for Skyrim, it still sort of comes out on top because I've played it four or five times. Um, there's a whole world to explore and stuff like that. The music in it is amazing. You really feel like it's a part of the, uh, the environment. You also... Hang on. I'm still dying from hay fever, guys. So um, one of the the cool things that I liked about the game was um, the different weapons you can get. You know, you can build them up better. You can design, well, not design, but you can put together the armor. You can put together the weapons. You can enchant them. You can explore the world, do hunting, do all sorts of things in the game. And I think that was the cool thing. Um, you could do whatever you want and create your own story and legacy in the game, so to speak. And that was something that I really enjoyed and had a lot of fun in doing. And it's funny, like, each time I, I started playing the game, you know, I still enjoyed it from the first time that I played on the PS3, which we knew was a pretty buggy version of the game. And I think things improved a lot, probably for the PC and especially the PS4 and Switch where, you know, most of those bugs and issues had been ironed out. Um, obviously, you know, mistakes in the PS3 version, you have to reload a, an earlier save of the game. But to sort of close off this uh, shortest video, I guess, um, and I'll probably do a video again on Skyrim with uh, other people, if you're interested in chatting about it or not, is... I think it was probably the first real role play game that I enjoyed playing. And, you know, hopefully Elder Scrolls 6 is really good and going well. Um, you know, it's in the middle of being made. But um, it was definitely a game that I could sort of wander around in the environment and enjoy doing. Um, some of the storylines were interesting, you know, um, siding with um, who should rule Skyrim. And you obviously help decide who gets to rule Skyrim. And yeah, all right, I'm done. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm still not 100% well, but um, I just wanted to make this um, Skyrim video um, about how I feel about the game and stuff like that. And uh, let me know in the comments what you think about it. But overall, there's just so much to talk about um, this game and the legacy, how much it sold. It's in the top 20 selling games of, the, um, of all time, 30 million sold. It's been released on every console, not quite, but, you know, um, it feels like it, but it has been on every console since PS3 and, you know, that generation. But I do wonder what the future holds up. The 10th anniversary game is pretty much out now, and you can um, pick that up for your modern day consoles and all that sort of stuff. So let me know in the comments what you think about Skyrim hitting 10 years. And that's it for me for this NNN show. I'll see you next time.